This presentation is for Chapter 12, Long-Term Liabilities, Exercises S12-1 through S12-10, S12-12, S12-13, S12-A-13, S12-A-14, S12-B-16, and S12-B-17. You should pause the presentation and complete these exercises and come back and check your work. On January 1st, 2018, Lakeman Fay signed a $1,500,000 15 year 7% note. The loan required Lakeman Fay to make annual payments on December 31st of $100,000 principal plus interest. The problem asks first that we journalize the issuance of the note on January 1st, 2018. To make this entry, we would debit cash and credit notes payable for the $1,500,000 face amount of the note. Next, the problem asks that we journalize the first note payment on December 31st, 2018. To make this entry, we would debit notes payable for the $100,000 principal payment and debit interest expense for $105,000, which is equal to 7% of the face amount of $1,500,000 for one year. Last, we would credit cash for the total cash payment of $205,000. Ember purchased a building with a market value of $280,000 and land with a market value of $55,000 on January 1, 2018. Ember paid $15,000 cash and signed a 25-year, 12% mortgage payable for the balance. To journalize the purchase on January 1, 2018, you would debit building for $280,000 and land for $55,000 and credit mortgage payable for $320,000 and cash for the down payment of $15,000. Next, we will journalize the first monthly payment of $3,370 on January 31, 2018. To record this entry, we would debit mortgage payable for the principal portion $170 which is the difference between the payment of $3,370 and the interest of $3,200. The interest expense is equal to 12 times the mortgage balance of $320,000 for one month or one twelfth of the year. Cash would be credited for the payment amount of $3,370. Bond prices depend on the market rate of interest, stated rate of interest, and time. This problem asks us to determine whether the following bonds payable will be issued at face value, at a premium, or at a discount. The first problem states that the market interest rate is 8%, but Idaho issues bonds payable with a stated rate of 7.75%. Since the market rate exceeds the stated rate of the bonds, these bonds would be issued at a discount. The next problem states that Austin issued 9% bonds payable when the market interest rate was 8.25%. Since the bonds are paying a higher rate of interest than the market, these bonds will sell at a premium. The next one states that Cleveland's cars issued 10% bonds when the market interest rate was 10%. Since both the stated rate and the market rate are the same, 10%, these bonds will sell at par or face value. The last one states that Atlanta's tourism issued bonds payable that pay the stated interest rate of 8.5%, but as issuance, the market interest rate was 10.25%. Since the market rate exceeds the stated rate, these bonds will be issued at a discount. Bond prices depend on the market rate of interest, stated rate of interest, and time. This problem asks that we compute the price of the following 8% bonds of Country Telecom. To do this, we multiply the $100,000 face amount times the amount shown, such as we multiply $100,000 times 75.25% and we get $75,250 for the first one and $103,500 for the second, $94,500 for the third, and $103,250 for the fourth. The problem then asks which bond will Country Telecom have to pay the most to retire at maturity? The answer is that all of the bonds will have the same maturity value of $100,000. 
savvy drive-ins borrowed money by issuing three million five hundred thousand dollars of nine percent bonds payable at ninety nine point five how much cash did savvy receive when it issued the bonds payable they would receive three million four hundred and eighty two thousand five hundred dollars which is equal to the face amount three million five hundred thousand times the ninety nine point five percent how much must savvy pay back at maturity they would still pay back the full three million five hundred thousand dollars how much cash interest will savvy pay each six months they would pay a hundred and fifty seven thousand five hundred which is equal to the three million five hundred thousand times nine percent times one divided by two power company issued a one million dollar five percent five-year bond payable at face value on january first two thousand and eighteen to journalize the issuance of the bonds payable on January 1st, 2018, we would debit cash for $1 million and credit bonds payable for $1 million. To journalize the payment of the semi-annual interest and amortization of the bond discount or premium on July 1st, 2018, we would debit interest expense and credit cash for $25,000, which is equal to the $1 million face amount times a 5% interest rate times one half. There would be no amortization of bond discount or premium for this issue of bonds. Owen issued a $110,000 11% 10 year bond payable at 94 on January 1, 2018. To journalize the issuance of the bond payable on January 1st, we would debit cash for $103,000. $400, which is equal to the face amount of 110000 times the 94% issuance price. Debit discount on bonds payable for 6600 the difference between the face amount, 110000 and the cash received, 103400 and credit bonds payable for the face amount of 110000 To journalize the payment of semi-annual interest and amortization of the bond discount, on July 1st, 2018, we would debit interest expense for $6,380, equal to the sum of the discount amortization and the cash paid. The discount on bonds payable would be credited for $330, which is equal to the $6,600 discount divided by the 20 semi-annual interest periods for the bonds. Then we would credit cash for $6,050, which is equal to the $110,000 face amount of the bonds times the stated rate of 11% times one half. Wilkes Mutual Insurance Company issued a $100,000 5% 10 year bond payable at 111 on January 1st, 2018. To record the issuance of the bond payable on January 1st, we would debit cash for $111,000. $111,000 equal to the face amount, $100,000, times the 111%. We would credit premium on bonds payable for $11,000. The difference between the face amount of the bonds, $100,000, and the cash received of $111,000. And then we would credit the bonds payable for the $100,000 face amount. Next, we journalized the payment of the semi-annual interest and amortization of the bond premium on July 1st. First, we debit interest expense for $1,950, which is the difference between the cash of $2,500 and the premium amortization of $550. Next, we debit premium on bonds payable for the $550, which is equal to the premium of $11,000 divided by 20, the number of semi-annual interest periods. Last, we credit cash for the $2,500, which is equal to the $100,000 times 5% divided by 2. McQueen issued a $100,000 7.5% 10-year bond payable. The problem asks that we journalize the issuance of the bonds on January 1, 2018. To do this, we debit cash for $100,000 and credit bonds payable for $100,000. Next, we record the payment of the semi-annual cash interest on July 1, 2018. To make this entry, we debit interest expense for $3,750, equal to the $100,000 face amount, times 7.5%, times one-half. We credit cash for the same amount. Last, we will record the payment of the bonds at maturity by debiting bonds payable and crediting cash for $100,000. 
On January 1, 2018, Powell issued $350,000 of 10% five-year bonds payable at 102. Powell has extra cash and wishes to retire the bonds payable on January 1, 2019, immediately after making the second annual interest payment. To retire the bonds, Powell pays the market price of 98. First, the problem asks us to compute the carrying amount of Powell's bonds payable on the retirement date. To do this, we first calculate the amount of the bonds at issuance, which is equal to the face value of the bonds, 350,000, times the issuance price of 102, which gives us 357,000. Next, we need to determine the amortization of the premium for one year, which is equal to the premium of $7,000 divided by the five years of the bonds, or $1,400. We subtract the amortization of the premium, 1400 from the carrying amount at issuance, 357000 and we get $355,600 for the carrying value of the bonds at January 1, 2019. Next, the problem asks how much cash must Powell pay to retire the bonds payable. This would be equal to the face amount of the bonds, 350000 times the 98%, which is the market price on January 1, 2019. This gives us $343,000. Last, the problem asks us to compute Powell's gain or loss on the retirement of the bonds payable. To determine this, we take the carrying amount of the bonds at January 1, 2019, $355,600, and subtract the amount we paid for them. To retire them, $343,000, and we get $12,600, which is the gain on the retirement. Jackson Corporation has the following amounts as of December 31, 2018. Total assets of $55,250, total liabilities of $22,750, and total equity of $32,500. The problem asks that we compute the debt to equity ratio at December 31, 2018. To do this, we would divide the $22,750 of total liabilities by the total equity of $32,500, and we get 0.70 or 70%. Your grandfather would like to share some of his fortune with you. He offers you money under one of the following scenarios, and you get to choose which one. You can have either $8,750 per year at the end of the next six years, $49,650 lump sum now, or $100,450 lump sum six years from now. The problem tells you to calculate the present value of each scenario using a 6% discount rate and which scenario yields the highest present value. The first one would yield a present value of $43,024 by multiplying the $8,750 payments by the annuity factor for 6% for six years or 4.917. The second one would have a present value of the same amount, $49,650, because that is the amount now. The third one would have the largest present value of $70,817, which is equal to the $100,450 times the present value factor of a single sum for 6% for six years, or 0 0.705. The last part of the problem asks, would your preference change if you used a 12% discount rate? The answer is no. The first one would only get smaller with a higher discount rate and is already below the $49,650. The last one would still be the highest at $50,928, which is equal to the $100,450 times the present value factor of 0 0.507 for 12% for six years. On December 31, 2018, when the market interest rate is 12%, Benson Realty issues $600,000 of 9.25% 10-year bonds payable. The bonds pay interest semi-annually. The problem asks that we determine the present value of the bonds at issuance. To compute the present value, we will use the market rate of 12% divided by 2, or 6%, and the number of semi-annual interest periods of 20 to determine the factors for the present value computations. 
First, we compute the present value of the bond's maturity value of $600,000 by multiplying by the factor of 0.312 for the present value of a single sum at 6% for 20 periods. This gives us $187,200. Next, we determine the present value of the 20 semiannual interest payments by multiplying $27,750, the semiannual interest, by the factor of 11.470, the present value annuity factor for 6% for 20 periods. This gives us $318,293. We then add the present value of the bond's maturity value of $187,200 and the present value of the semiannual interest payments of $318,293 and get a total of $505,493 for the present value of the bonds at issuance. On December 31, 2018, when the market interest rate is 8%, Biggs Realty issues $450,000 of 5.25% 10-year bonds payable. The bonds pay interest semi-annually. The present value of the bonds at issuance is $365,732. The problem asks that we prepare an amortization table using the effective interest amortization method for the first two semi-annual interest periods. First, we start with the carrying amount of the bonds at issuance, $365,732. These bonds were sold at a discount of $84,268 since the market rate was 8%, but the stated rate was only 5.25%. Then we compute the cash interest payment for the bonds of $11,813 by multiplying the face amount of the bonds, $450,000, by the stated rate of 5.25% and dividing by 2. Next, we determine the amount of interest expense on the bonds at 6.30-2019 by multiplying the carrying amount of the bonds, $365,732, by the market rate of 8% and dividing by 2 to get $14,629. The discount amortization is equal to the difference between the interest expense of $14,629 and the cash payment of $11,813 or $2,816. This amount is then added to the carrying, previous carrying amount of $365,732 to get the new carrying amount of $368,548. We make the same calculations for the 1231-2019 interest payment as shown in the amortization table to get $11,813 cash interest payment, $14,742 interest expense, $2,929 of discount amortization, and $371,477 for the carrying amount. Next, the problem asks that we record the issuance of the bonds. We debit cash for the issue price of $365,732. We debit discount on bonds payable for the difference between the face amount of the bonds, $450,000, and the issue price of $365,732, or $84,268. Last, we credit bonds payable for $450,000. Next, the problem asks that we journalize the first semi-annual interest payment on June 30, 2019. To make this entry, we debit interest expense for $14,629, credit discount on bonds payable for $2,816, and credit cash for $11,813. Last, the problem asks that we record the second semi-annual interest payment on December 31, 2019. We debit interest expense for $14,742, credit discount on bonds payable for $2,929, and credit cash for $11,813. On December 31, 2018, when the market interest rate is 6%, Benson Realty issues $700,000 of 6.25% 10-year bonds payable. The bonds pay interest semi-annually. The present value of the bonds at issuance is $713,234. The problem asks that we prepare an amortization table using the effective interest amortization method for the first two semi-annual interest periods. 
we start with the issuance price of $713,234. These bonds were issued at a premium of $13,234 because the stated rate of 6.25% was higher than the market interest rate of 6%. To determine the interest payment at 630 2019 we multiply the stated rate of 6.25% times the face amount of the bond, 700000 and divide by 2, and we get $21,875. To determine the interest expense, we multiply the carrying amount of the bond, $713,234, by the market interest rate of 6%, and divide by 2, and we get $21,000. $397. To determine the premium amortization, we subtract the interest expense of $21,397 from the interest payment of $21,875, and we get $478. We subtract this amount from the carrying amount of the bonds to get $712,756 for the new carrying amount. We compute the amounts for the 1231-2019 interest payment using the same method and we get cash payment of $21,875, interest expense of $21,383, premium amortization of $492, and a new carrying amount of $712,264. Now we will journalize the issuance of the bonds on December 31, 2018. We debit cash for $713,234 and credit premium on bonds payable for $13,234. The difference between the cash received of $713,234 and the face amount of the bond, $700,000. Last, we credit bonds payable for the face amount of $700,000. Now we will record the first semi-annual interest payment on June 30, 2019 by debiting interest expense for $21,397, debiting premium on bonds payable for $478, and crediting cash for $21,875. Last, we make the journal entry for the second semi-annual interest payment by debiting interest expense for $21,383, and debiting premium on bonds payable for $492, and crediting cash for $21,000. $875. And that is the conclusion of the demonstration of the exercises for Chapter 12.